So I made this huge pile of books that I wanted to recommend for the autumn spooky season and I did not realize how hard it is to classify these things. I tried to sort of organize them so that for people who maybe don't want something that's super scary, um, there would be, you know, a section for that. And then I tried to separate into, you know, more like gory type books. And it just ended up being <laughs> really difficult to do that. I did sort of put these into four different categories. You may agree or disagree with how I've categorized them. But hi, everyone. My name is Leslie, and I talk a lot about books on my channel. I tend to read mostly fantasy, sci-fi, uh, literary fiction, and I love a good creepy book. I read a lot of historical fiction as well. So let me get more of my fall stuff in this shot. Yeah. So if that sounds good to you, I hope that you will stick around and enjoy these book recommendations. So I am going to start off a little bit more lighthearted in this video with a middle grade series. This is City of Ghosts by Victoria Schwab. I could only find two of them. I don't know where my other book went tunnel of bones. I think I have the first and third one here. Um, but this is a middle grade series about a girl who has uh, like her best friend. Is it her best friend a ghost? Let's see. Yes, her best friend is a ghost. Um, she had a near death experience when she was much younger. And I think that like opened her up to the possibility of seeing ghosts. And her parents are also ghost hunters. And so they go all over the world filming this TV show where they explore like haunted places. And our main character, um, of course, being able to see ghosts, gets to experience that alongside her parents. I like the first book a lot. The second and third book, though, I really, really enjoyed. And when I read them, it just made me think, I wish that this series had been around when I was a kid because I would have been obsessed with it, like absolutely freaking obsessed <laughs> with this series. I My horror reading ways started quite young for me. Some of my earlier memories of reading were like Christopher Pike and R.L. Stein, and always loved and so I absolutely would have been obsessed with this series as a child. However, it's really good to read this time of year as an adult as well. The first book starts in the Paris catacombs and then each other book is her family traveling to different places around the world. I don't remember the, the other places, I just remember Paris at first. Oh, it looks like the third book is in New Orleans. So I have a graphic novel here. This is Through the Woods by Emily Carroll, and it's a bunch of short stories. They're all fairy tale related, and it's quite creepy fairy tales. The art in here, it can be a little bit gory and a little bit graphic. It's quite creepy and atmospheric. But I also think, you know, a, a graphic novel is a good way, especially with short stories related to fairy tales that you might, might already be familiar with. This could be a really great way to kind of dip your toes into something creepy and atmospheric without having to like invest, you know, tons of time into it if you're not sure if that's going to be your thing. I have three books about witches here and I don't think any of them are actually scary, um, but it's October and it's witch witchy season. And so I thought that they would be a really good option for, like I said, people who are not super into scary stuff, but still enjoy the atmosphere. This is The Manning Tree Witches by A.K. Blakemore. I read this earlier this year, I want to say in January, and I absolutely adored this book. This book is about a witch trial in, where did this happen? In Manning Tree <laughs> in uh, 1643. And it's kind of got, you know, your your usual witch hunting um, story where you follow specific women in this small town and their attempts to either outwit or outsmart or outrun the witch hunters. And then there are women who are playing along and trying to, you know, stab each other in the back, basically. But what I liked about this book so much was the writing was really, the writing style was really great. And it actually made me laugh out loud a few times. There's a, a good amount of humor in here, but it's like, it's smart humor. And I really appreciated that about it. And I really want to read it again. This next one, again, not a scary book. This is a middle grade book that I think actually it might be young adult. I don't know. It probably actually, I think it was young adult, but this is Half Witch by John Shoffstall. And this book, I would say, is good for anybody who likes really heavy fantasy 
like fairy tale inspired stories. Labyrinth comes to mind. Also legend, not because the plots are at all the same, but just because that hardcore like fantasy fairy tale vibe. So this is about a girl whose father is thrown into a jail uh, dungeon and she has to go and rescue him. And she gets a witch to help her out. But as they are, you know, going on this adventure to save her father, our main character slowly is also turning into a witch, which she doesn't really want to do. I picked this up initially. I've never heard anybody else talk about this book, but I picked this up initially because the illustrations, like look at this cover. It's so pretty. <laughs> like I just love this cover a whole lot. But I really enjoyed it reading this. Like I said, good for, you know, the fairy tale autumn witchy atmosphere without really being scary at all. I would recommend the entire Practical Magic series. This just happens to be Magic Lessons because I was trying not to carry too many books around <laughs> my house today. Obviously, Practical Magic, the movie, is, you know, kind of got a cult following. Um, it's me. I am the cult. <laughs> and I watch it every single year, multiple times a year. It was very formative for me growing up. But this series follows the Owens women. And we start actually, for any of you who are familiar with the movie, we start back in the day, in the Pilgrim days with Maria Owens, who was the original witch in the family. I like this series because it's got a lot more magic to it than the movie did. And by that, I mean, we hear a lot more about, you know, their actual like magic practices like the potions and the gardens and how they, how the Owens family like interacts with the town and how the town views them. It's really cozy. This whole series is just really cozy. And again, really a great idea, um, especially if you want to lean hard into those like autumn vibes without being scared. But this is Rebecca by Daphne du Maurier. I need some coffee. And the reason that I chose this one is because of the atmosphere. It's not scary at all. There is a mysterious element to it. Well, obviously, it's a classic. But for anybody who hasn't um, heard of this book, this follows a young woman and she runs into this uh, this man who's like kind of dark and mysterious at a resort. She's a companion for this older rich lady and she ends up getting whisked away that by this mysterious man. Um, they get married and he takes her to Manderley, which is the famous, you know, first opening line um, of this book mentions Manderley. But she goes to this manor by the sea. There's this very mysterious presence linging, lingering over all of them of Rebecca. And Rebecca is her husband's first wife, but nobody will really talk about her. She, um, our narrator, who is never named, by the way, doesn't really know anything. Like nobody will tell her anything. And she always feels like she's coming in second place to Rebecca, who is dead. <laughs> and so she's kind of trying to unravel this mystery of what happened to her husband's first wife. I would say um, the writing in this is stunning, but I recommend reading this more than once. The first time I read this book, I really enjoyed it. I really wanted to know. I love the atmosphere, like this gothic mystery atmosphere. I wanted to know what happened to Rebecca and what was going to happen with our narrator and her husband. Um, but then the second time I read it, once you know everything, it's actually an even better reading experience. So I think the first time I gave it four stars. And then the second time I read it, read it, I gave it five stars because once you know everything and you can go back and look at everything that Daphne du Maurier had put in here for us to see, for us to notice, it's just so brilliant. It's so such a brilliant book. Like I said, not scary at all, but it does have that really great like gothic atmospheric. It takes place, I want to say in like the 1950s, 1940s, 1950s, something like that. Okay, moving on to our slightly creepier books. I have What Moves the Dead by T. Kingfisher. I didn't actually realize this going into this book, but it is a retelling or reimagining of the fall of the House of Usher, where uh, we have this, you know, formerly wealthy, powerful family who is kind of like dwindling down to their last couple of members. So we have our main character who ends up in this manor. So Alex Easton, friend lives there, she's ill, and they are kind of finding out why this family is all getting sick and 
and passing away really short. And it's so hard to gauge other people's fa- like creepiness factor, <laughs> but I would I would say it could get you know kind of creepy. I'm trying to unravel the mystery of why Madeline is sick and then what is happening to all of the miscellaneous dead animals that keep coming back to life <laughs> on the grounds. I think this book might be a surprise as well. The Little Stranger by Sarah Waters. It's not a horror novel by any means. If I were to compare it with any other books on this list, I would say it's most similar to Rebecca in tone for me, where we have this family that's sort of isolated and a doctor comes periodically to check up on who the mother. I can't remember who he, this doctor ends up going to check on. It's been like a good seven years since I've read this book, but he goes to see this family who lives in this isolated manner. Um, One of them is quite ill and just weird, weird stuff is happening. And it's one of those things where you're not sure if it's like is it the isolation is it that these people have been sort of shut away from society for a long time what exactly is going on there was a particular scene in this so that I have a very vivid memory of reading because I was in my office and I was done with work but I was waiting to leave and it was raining outside like pouring thunder and there is this scene in here that creeped me out so bad (laughs) as I was like alone in this huge office listening to this rain and this thunder. There is a movie adaptation of this book and it was pretty good but of course then you don't get Sarah Waters's prose if you if you do that. Recommend for like the gothic occasionally kind of creepy vibes and if you find yourself in the right situation when you're writing a particular scene and you're all alone and it's raining like cats and dogs then who knows, it might be really scary to you. (laughs) I tried to just pick one book per author. And this is definitely one of the authors that I had to kind of calm down (laughs) with. This is Laura Purcell's The Silent Companion. I got this copy from Forbidden Planet when I was in London. So it's a really gorgeous copy, but this is historical fiction. I would recommend anything that Laura Purcell has written, especially if you like historical fantasy or historical fantasy, especially if you like historical fiction or um, sort of more gothic type of atmosphere. This one in particular is about a woman who gets married and her husband, I believe he's gone quite often. And there are all of these like wooden, I mean, we would think of them as like a cardboard cutout of a person, but there are these wooden people that have been like painted and they're all in this attic. I think they're all in the attic space. They might be all over the house. I can't remember. This woman is kind of isolated. She's unsure of, you know, what's going on in her marriage. She's living in a new house and these wooden painted people things are freaking her out. (laughs) So that's the premise of this one. I need to reread all of these. I don't know what to end on. Like, do I need to end on a really good one or something? I don't know. I do need some coffee though. I turned my AC down today just so that I could wear a sweatshirt. Okay, my next set of books that I have is creepy, some sort of like sci-fi. I I don't, you know, I would say the remainder of these books, which I have, I have 10 more books in front of me. I would say the remainder of these are the ones that could genuinely, like genuinely freak people out. Maybe, I don't know. There's actually a couple on here that wouldn't, I don't think freak people out. My next recommendation is Night Film by Marisha Pestle. This one I know was big on booktube seven, eight years ago. I have actually read this book twice. It's one that you read it and then you can't stop thinking about. The premise of this book is that the daughter of a famous filmmaker has died and we're trying to figure out if she committed suicide, if she was murdered. There's a lot of mystery surrounding this filmmaker and his daughter. The atmosphere in this book is really what made me want to put it on this list. It's very like dark and gloomy and I feel like this is the kind of book where if it were made into a movie it would be entirely done like at night like the daytime does not exist (laughs) because just the atmosphere would not be right. This book is interesting because it does have sort of this mixed media aspect to it where we have blog posts and then we have like news articles and websites and things like that. I can show you really quickly. So like this, 
And that's interspersed with, you know, the more traditional, like, you know, just like narrative tech. But it's really a, an interesting investigation into who this filmmaker is. And everything feels so real. Like I, you know, you come out of this book wishing that all the movies that were talked about in this book were real, but also knowing that if they were real, they would scare the hell out of you in a really unsettling way. In that sense, this is a really creepy book, but I think that the atmosphere itself is really what sells it for me for this time of year in particular. Then we have one that is not really creepy to me. I don't remember this being creepy. I guess unless you're, you think body horror is creepy, which is fair. <laughs> a lot of people do. Um, but this is The Girl with All the Gifts by M.R. Carey. This is another one that was kind of bigger on YouTube a while back. This is about a girl who's being protected by like scientists and military and the blurb makes it like really unclear about why she is being protected, but we come to find out that basically there has been like a zombie <laughs> apocalypse and that is the world in which this girl is being protected and sort of transported from one place to another in order to accomplish some goal. I think I think it's told from her perspective, so she does not fully understand the reality that she's living in and we're kind of learning about it as she does too. My next book is Revelator by Daryl Gregory. And this is a weird, weird book. Probably at a couple of points <laughs> while reading this book, I was like, what the F? The premise of this book is that there is a, a girl who grew up in this very like rural area in the South. And one day she finds this cave and meets this entity called Ghost Daddy. Flash forward to when this girl is now grown up and she's a bootlegger. She returns back home and finds out that another young girl is going through something very similar to what she did when she was a child. I don't know how else to describe this book. It's just so weird. I do appreciate that it doesn't like shy away from explanations. I do think your mileage may vary <laughs> on this book but I really enjoyed it. I thought it was interesting trying to figure out what in the heck these weirdos, <laughs> these people were up to here in those mountains. Even as I'm talking about this, I'm thinking of other books that should be in this pile. Next up is David Mitchell's Slate House. This is quite a short one, and this is actually it's a companion novel to The Bone Clocks. This is five separate short stories about the same house. Every nine years, the residents of Slade House extend an invitation to someone who's different or lonely. That's what we are reading is five instances of what happens every nine years when someone ends up finding Slade House and going inside. It's creepy. I remember being like really, really creeped out <laughs> by this book. I do think you could read it on its own without reading Bone Clocks. There is some like lore, some world building intricacies that will make a lot more sense if you have read The Bone Clocks, but it's definitely not required. But if you're going for like that haunted house sort of vibes, then I think that this would be a good option. He doesn't usually write horror. I think this is my recommendation for anybody who enjoys Stephen King. Um, this is Imaginary Friend by Stephen Chbosky, and this is quite... <laughs> quite long. It actually doesn't look that long on the camera, but it is 682. And this starts off when our main character, this young boy um, goes missing for six days. And then he, when he shows back up, you know, his mom's really relieved, but then that's when things start getting really weird and supernatural and interesting. There's that vibe that Stephen King has where he also really emphasizes the people around the main action and their sort of response, like their often their, you know, ostracization of the main characters that's done in here as well. And I think he actually thanks Stephen King in the dedication. If you're looking for another haunted house type story, we have The Graveyard Apartment. This is translated from Japanese. The author is Mariko Koike and translated by Deborah Bolivar-Bohm. And this is about an apartment building. 
uh, that is built across the street from a graveyard and we have this family that moves in. It's a good deal for them financially but of course things start going really weird and they start thinking about moving but the building makes it really hard for them to be able to leave like financially it's going to be difficult but then things escalate and it just gets really really tense. I often do not visualize a ton while I read. I would say it's like 50-50 but this book I have some specific scenes that stick out in my mind as being pretty darn creepy. Haunted apartment building vibes. <laughs> this series I actually don't think is that creepy to me. This is uh, Feed. This is the Newsflash trilogy by Mira Grant and this is zombie apocalypse again only this time we are following a group of reporters, journalists, who are trying to do their work within the confines of the way that society has restructured itself after this apocalypse has happened. It's really interesting because you're not watching the apocalypse unfold, but really what you're witnessing is how we have sort of made a life within this situation. Um, I will say that the first book is pretty good. I got pretty into it. I enjoyed all of the like the technical stuff like with you know all the protocols that they have to follow, all the rules and regulations and stuff that allow people to still you know survive and have a normal somewhat normal life. But then the second book is where this series really kicks off and it just gets wild. <laughs> it just gets wild. But it's not it's not really that spooky to me. It's definitely got some tense moments for sure. I know that I <laughs> said I was trying to stick to one book per author, but I did choose another Mira Grant book. This is Into the Drowning Deep. This is another sci-fi book where we have this ship, like a big, I imagined it like this huge, huge boat. <laughs> Clearly I'm a, an expert on, on different types of boat. We have this like scientific expedition to made up of a bunch of different type of, uh, of experts and they are going to try to find mermaids. I think that's their purpose. I think that's why they're out there. Either way, <laughs> that's where they're headed in the plot. Only the mermaids in this book are not cute. They are not sweet. They are not magical, mystical creatures. They are deadly and it gets quite gross and gory. I would recommend this if you're looking for like a really creepy, like isolated out in the ocean. What are these creatures? What is happening to all these people around me? Kind of vibes. Last couple of books that I have to recommend are both by Grady Hendrix. So this is my best friend's exorcism. I mentioned this one because it's the first Grady Hendrix that I ever read. And so I do have a bit of, uh, I guess, nostalgia for, for this one in particular. The title says it all. One of my favorite things about Grady Hendrix is that if he's doing this historical horror, he will definitely take advantage of the place and the time that he's writing in. It gives me Stranger Things vibes in the sense that it's very nostalgic without really sugarcoating it. Uh, the one I actually want to recommend from him though, just because it's different, just because I don't really hear people talk about this one ever, is Horror Store. The format is like an Ikea catalog. If you look at the cover, it has like prices and stuff on it. So this is about uh, employees in, in an Ikea-like store and it's haunted and just really weird stuff starts happening. They get locked inside for some reason. I can't remember the premise, the motivation for this, but for some reason a group of them have to stay overnight in the store. Obviously they get lost because that's what you do in one of these stores. But more than that, it seems like the store itself or something in it is out to get them. And of course you can, I mean, given the format of this, as you can imagine, there is, you know, quite a bit of, of humor, like a lot of clever, you know, turns of phrase and, and stuff, just because it is, you know, riffing off of a Kia catalog that just happens to have a story going on. Um, as well. That is it for my suggestions, for my recommendations for this season. I did think of a couple of others. So first off, I do really recommend Dracula. It's a classic for a reason, you know, but I read it last year when the Dracula Daily was really taking off. I read the whole book because I didn't want to wait <laughs> for the emails and it was much more in entertaining than I actually expected it to be. I would also recommend Just Like Home by Sarah Gailey. When I was talking about Revelator, that reminded me of Just Like Home because we have uh, a woman who 
returns back to your home, haunted house vibes. It gets wild though. That's the thing I think that reminds me of Revelator is that it gets really, really strange and dark. I could probably go on. I'm sure if I continue digging through my shelves, I would find even more books that I have to recommend for spooky season. But let me know if you've read any of them. Let me know if you do read any of these in the future based on my recommendation. I'm always so curious about, you know, if people do take my recommendations, if they agreed <laughs> with the fact that I recommended it. But especially with like this kind of thing where you never know what somebody else is going to think is creepy. Like maybe, you know, half witch is going to scare the crap out of somebody. I don't know. <laughs> I have no idea how other people are going to take it necessarily. So let me know what you think and I will see you in the next video. Bye.